Your piano teacher, Tim, here, and today I'm going to share with you some mistakes that beginners always make on the piano as hurting their progress. And by always, I mean always, and you're probably making some of these mistakes too. You want to make sure you check around to the end of the lesson because as we go, the mistakes that I'm going to tell you about are more and more important and less and less obvious. So let's get started. Okay, mistake number one that beginners may always make is that they will play over uh, what they are already good at over and over and over again and then skip over what they're not as good at. Um, so just kind of an example here, we have this minuet here. And say I've been learning this for a few weeks. And naturally, you know, instinctively, you're going to start from the beginning when you start learning the piece. And there's no problem with that at all, except when you start to get to be a few weeks in, what'll happen is your beginning of the song will be so good because you're starting it from there all the time. And what'll tend to happen is like, you might get to the third line and have a lot of trouble there. Makes sense, you know, we always have our trouble areas. But what a lot of students will do is they won't start their practice session from there. They'll just keep starting from the beginning all the time. This next mistake plagues everybody. It even still gets me a lot of times if I'm not consciously aware of that and that, aware of it. And this mistake, of course, is playing too fast. So this is especially a problem in pieces that students know really well. So say you're trying to learn a, a popular pop tune or something like that. So what a lot of students will do is they'll try to play it at full speed right away. I know that was a Christmas song. Um, but what that will do is you'll, you might be able to start out at that speed, but what'll happen is you'll get halfway through the piece and then all of a sudden you're, you're really trudging through it and that will cause you to skip mistake areas as well. So make sure you're going through these pieces. Like if I'm playing this minuet, I might want to start out playing it almost painfully slow, but what, what that will do is that will help me Make sure I'm not making any mistakes, both with the notes and the rhythms. Making sure I'm retaining that accuracy there. Just like that. Because what'll happen is like if a student knows a song really well and they play it at full speed, they will unknowingly skip over mistakes or what'll happen is they'll remember it a certain way in their head, but the actual song is different and if you looked at the sheet music you would know that so it's kind of like a mandela effect thing where you're like the song has to do this I, I always remember it that way but no you want to double check with your sheet music go slow to make sure that you are as accurate as possible because that is very important when learning piano all right on to mistake number three this mistake the third mistake that students commonly make is very very important and it's something that i've had students who start to become more advanced they skip when they're a beginner and then they realize what a problem it is as they get into the intermediate and advanced and they start playing the more difficult pieces. And I am talking, of course, about writing in and making sure that you are using the correct finger numbers for each of these pieces. So as you know, or you may have noticed throughout your piece, you have numbers over some of the notes. Well, that's telling you what note to hit and what finger to hit that note with. And the whole purpose of using the correct fingers is that it will prevent you from running out of fingers. Say you're playing the C major scale and you just use any old finger technique. Well, what happens is at G, you have three more notes in the scale. I've run out of fingers, meaning I don't have any more fingers to play the rest of the scale with. So if you use proper finger technique, meaning you're crossing at the right places, having the right fingers on the right notes, that will help you play up and down the keyboard very effectively without running out of notes and having to have your palms face really weird ways. You never want that to be the case. So make sure you're writing in the finger numbers. Um, a lot of them will be written in for you, especially with the beginner pieces. But if there's a certain passage where you're just really struggling getting the fingering down, write down the finger numbers for each note. It's gonna take a little trial and error at times to find what works for you. In general, you want to use the same fingering that you've been using for your scales, your arpeggios, your chords. That's why it's so important that you learn these things um, on their own because when you start putting them into your music, you'll see that right away and be like, okay, that's you know that's an F major chord 
in uh, second inversion. I know the fingering for that is 5-2-1 because I've been practicing this so much. So you'll be able to identify these things so much better and get them um, so much better. All right, on to mistake number four. The fourth mistake that beginners always make is that they will try to play a piece way above their level. This is super common. It causes so many people to quit piano because what happens is like they'll have an idea. You'll have an idea in your mind. You'll be like, oh man, I really always wanted to play for Elise. Well, what'll happen is like that meme, like what your expectations are versus reality. What'll happen is at least unless you're like some kind of, you know, naturally talented prodigy, what'll happen is you'll go to play for Elise and you'll be like, Oh my goodness, uh, maybe I can play it, but the problem is, is that it'll take me 10,000 years and I won't be on the earth anymore by the time I finish the piece. That could be a problem. Well, the problem, real problem is that you're trying to play something way above your current level. What you need to do is you need to work your way up. I would learn, um, first of all, I'd learn like exercises first. I actually have a lesson on this. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description. It's about like what you should learn as a beginner. But anyway, you should learn um, five finger exercises, really just going up and down the keyboard like that. You know, that just helps you get your hands in position here. I would then learn maybe some scales. You might want to learn them hands separate first. Some arpeggios. So start with some exercises, but in terms of pieces, I would learn um, nursery rhymes. You know, I would learn Jack and Jill up the hill. Um, what a basket full of water or something like that or you know this old man all those old nursery songs You remember hearing as a kid learn those those are really easy They don't involve moving your hands all over the piano constantly like for Elise Has quite a bit of movement for there for somebody that's just starting out Okay, let's get on to the next mistake. But before we do, if you're liking the lesson so far, you find it helpful, make sure you smash that like button. It lets other people know it's a quality lesson they can learn from as well. All right, on to the next mistake. Something that's critical that beginners often neglect, and it's unfortunate because they think it's boring and that it's not fun to learn, but what you really need to learn and this will hurt you if you don't, is music theory, which is like generally how you know notes interact with each other, how chords are built, how scales and keys are built. This stuff is so, so important to you as a piano player because as you develop this knowledge, it's kind of like a toolbox. You probably hear teachers talk about your toolbox a lot. What will happen though is you'll start to look at pieces and you won't look at pieces anymore in terms of individual notes. Like if I'm a, a beginner, I might take a look here at the first note and be like, okay, that's a D. Okay, and then I have some notes down the left hand. You got G, B, and D. And, uh, you know, it would take you a lot longer than that even if you were just starting out. So that would take forever. So what you want to do is you want to develop knowledge of music theory because I can look at this and be like, okay, G major chord in the left hand, outlining a C chord there. So it just gives me a whole lot more to go on. I have some scale segments, you know, some intervals going on. So it gives you a lot more to go by. This also includes things, believe it or not, well, I'm sure a lot of you can believe because you are doing this, is that students won't just skip music theory. They'll skip reading music altogether and they'll just learn using synthesia or something like that. Synthesia, if you don't know, is like the, um, it's like a game kind of thing where these colored bars come down and you you basically replicate the song that way. There's a lot of drawbacks to that. Um, really the main drawback that you have to know right now, I can make a lesson just on this, is that you won't develop the skills to be able to learn on your own. You will become so dependent on Synthesia. Um, another uh, drawback is that Synthesia doesn't have things like dynamics in it. It doesn't have articulations. So you're missing a lot of what makes the music what it is using Synthesia. But if you learn how to read music, you'll be so much more of a versatile musician. You'll be able to just look at a piece of music and you'll be able to, I mean, if you, you practice your sight reading, you'll be able to play through it. It might not sound fantastic right away, but you'll get that satisfaction being able to play it through right away. One of the big things that's really hard to get over as a beginner piano student is that it takes so much time for a piece to start sounding the way it's supposed to. You know, if I'm learning for Elise, you know, a lot of us know what that is. But if I'm playing it at this speed, right, uh, it doesn't sound like anything. I mean, I know what it's supposed to sound like, but, you know, it's really hard to put it together. And it, it can be really frustrating. But the better you get 
at learning to read music, your music theory, and sight reading, and all these other things of how music's put together, you'll be so much better off. You'll be able to learn pieces 10 times faster. No clickbait here. Although somebody will accuse me of that, but that's okay. You're not a YouTuber until somebody accuses you of clickbait. Okay, this mistake is probably the most important one because it ties together literally everything else I've talked about so far. It combines it into one thing. And that is when you look at a sheet of music and when beginners look at a sheet of music, what do you see? Well, notes, right? Well, I, like I just mentioned a minute ago with the other mistake, is that you want to start developing a more comprehensive understanding of what's going on in the music that you are playing. Um, so, like I said, it, it, it helps to learn all the theory and things like that, but this takes it a step further because what you're going to do is you're actually going to take a minute or two before you even play the piece to analyze the piece in what's going on. Some of the things I might be looking out for are time signature, those numbers right there in the beginning. Key signature, you know, what notes are sharp or flat throughout the song. Uh, that also kind of tells you what chords you can generally expect throughout the piece in general. Um, so you want to look out for that. You want to look out for maybe any accidentals. These are sharps or flats, not in the key signature. So you want to take your time um, and I can't tell you how many times students actually do learn theory and everything, but they never get to that final step of applying it to what they're actually doing. So before you even begin, take two minutes, look at your piece, analyze it the best you can. And I'm telling you what, this will save you probably a dozen playthroughs. Because if you don't analyze this ahead of time, you're going to be analyzing it as you play. So what will happen is you'll start, you know, the piece here. And you and say I don't I didn't look at any of that stuff, and then I'll be like, oh wait, in that measure oh, that didn't sound right. Oh, because there's an F sharp there, okay. And then like in this measure, hmm, I had too many beats there. Oh, there's only three beats in a measure. So it really really saves you a lot of time to just take a minute or two, analyze what you're doing first. I have a lot of other lessons here on YouTube on what mistakes you need to avoid to learn this or that, so check those out. Make sure to check out some of the other lessons on the channel. Make sure you subscribe. You have all notifications turned on because we have new lessons coming out all the time, and you don't want to miss a beat. It's been your piano teacher, Tim, here once again. It's been a great lesson. I'm glad to be with you, and I'll talk to you again real soon.